Um, hello and welcome to today's edition of Between the Spreadsheets with me, Stephen Lindmander, as always. And on today's show, I've got our media uh, guru, um, Chris Ridgway, who's going to give you lots of advice and tell you all about how to promote and run your business. Hello, Chris. Thanks for joining us. Good afternoon. Uh, you, you do some shows yourself, don't you? You've got your own yeah. podcast going there with famous people and uh, <laughs> in the boxing world, yeah? Yeah, so I, I, I host three separate podcasts, um, one in the boxing world, one in the football world, and one in the um, health nutrition world. Right. Um, I work with um, sports people mainly, but it's um, it actually stemmed from a music background. Initially, back in the day, I was one of those believers that the band was going to make it. So um, we so were a singer guys. as well. No, <laughs> you, yeah, I play the guitar. You don't hear uh, me. In. Oh, well, we do. Have you got your guitar with you? Um, I've got an out tune one over there. Oh, well, um, maybe maybe we'll get a treat before we finish, and, and we'll have a, <laughs> a quick go on the guitar. So, so how does music go to boxing? <laughs> um, so boxing came about. I've always had a secondary interest in in the sport after music as I was growing up, mm. um, and then. Uh, I, I got a job working with a, a chap called Fred Doan, otherwise known as Better Fred, who um, he was running a company called The Sportsman and he wanted to grow The Sportsman out through its social channels, through its digital presence. Um, and, and essentially, he wanted to eventually turn that into a, a platform that would promote his gambling business. And, you know, you could go and put bets down on the horse racing and things. This was Bet Fred, um, did you say? Yeah. So quite a big so, time. But yeah. Um, Fairly kind of main player. And um, I didn't know, the, I don't know the first thing about horse racing. And what I said was my, my background was from a broadcast perspective was was taking cool stories and, and good hooks and things like that and, and turning them into, and packaging them to turn them into well-received pieces. Now, initially that was just on the radio uh, and, and Facebook had started to make a little bit of a presence and, you know, we could, we could write newspaper articles that would support what we were doing in those channels. But, as the years developed, Facebook became a major player. Um, print started falling away. Radio, to an extent, wasn't reaching the numbers it, it was maybe 20 years earlier. Uh, and then Instagram came along and Twitter and Snapchat and YouTube and, and TikTok nowadays and everything else. So it evolved from just maybe trying to grow a Facebook page into how to create content, how to package it, how to support yourself with backlinks, how to work with sponsors, how to work with partners and, and everything else. Um, and boxing is a is a world that opens itself up for that because what you tend to find in the boxing industry is you have young men and women who are incredibly talented, put a lot of time in gyms and on roads and in you know in rings and in, in crafting a skill and a technique, but without funding they can't really go very far. So you have to kind of work with them and say, well, this is how we we turn social views. This is how we turn. Um, you know, reach on Facebook into pounds in your pocket that can then pay your bills and, and allow you to, to work on your craft. Like I say, it helped. I had a passion for the sport. Um, quite quickly, it grew a, a really good phone book. And um, sort of five, five, six years later, here we are and mm. oh, into boxing, which which is a project of mine I acquired not so long ago. In, um, into boxing. On... Is, that, is yeah. that the company? Because I know into... I mean, we, we act for a few people in in the profession a few boxers and even some cage fighters and uh, I, I know how dedicated and know how hard working i mean most people do work very hard but this this is uh, i don't know i don't know if it's an addiction or a madness but it, it's definitely a passion with with lots of people i mean why would you get into a ring to get punched if it wasn't some sort of passion i mean i, I just run a mile but they do fall down when it comes to promoting themselves as individuals or or if they are running a company because a lot of boxers do move into promotion companies where they, they help people to uh, to become boxers and, and whatever. So is this is this a, an area that you're focusing on? For a lot of my time, yeah. yeah. Um, however, a few years ago, the dynamic changed when, when children came along and you have to kind of re realign and, and reassess where you are. Yeah. Um, and I realised I had this transferable skill of engineering backlinks, of engineering paid media, um, and was it going to be more beneficial for me to, to work into a commercial to, to move into a commercial aspect? So I stepped away from sport for a little while to um, to kind of to kind of build up. 
there's there's one of your assets now. I'll fix it in a minute, buddy. You want to start? <laughs> I mean, you want want to bring him on? You know, <laughs> maybe later. Get, get get them trained young. <laughs> <laughs> sorry it's it's okay. sorry it's you part of life up. isn't it we've, we've got yeah. kids um yeah so, so i had to kind of reassess where we were um in you know in terms of is this going to bring the money in that, that can that can provide and support a family so i looked at the commercial aspect knew that I had some good contacts through boxing and, and, and football and, and companies that had bought backlinks off us previously maybe they wanted a social media manager maybe they needed um, help doing that and I built up, built up quite a good network fairly quickly doing that um sorry you can probably it's okay. that <laughs> don't worry <laughs> um and then and then eventually the pull came quite strong to move back into sport uh, and especially with the opportunity to acquire into boxing and a couple of sister sites with that so I now run a podcast called the fight buzz that is a branch of into boxing um amongst other things but at the same time i kept hold of those digital clients um and just recently moved into a company called the protein works the, the, um, the protein works works okay um who do sport supplement they do protein energy bars that kind of thing and it's a really nice niche because i got to work with the sports industry that i was familiar with but at the same time practice you know continue to practice the skills that i'd learned with regards to, to digital marketing and outreach um so it's, it's kind of hard to pigeonhole my exact role yeah. i have to wear yeah. a few different hats but yes. it's quite a translatable skill and it's one that i'm lucky because i get to, to do it in a sport that i'm passionate about as well yeah do, do you box we have a box i have done i have done before yeah, yeah. It's, it's been a little while now i think um i think some of these young lads might make me look a bit foolish if i stepped in there now but um no. yeah a long time ago i used to quite enjoy stepping through the room. I went in once and I got hit and I got out. I, I, well, well, I used to do some wrestling. I used to go do amateur wrestling at the YMCA. And one, right. of, one, of, one of the lads there said it was a girls' sport wrestling and I should do some boxing. And I thought, okay, but, you know, you know I got hit, hurt, that's it. <laughs> Don't do it again. <laughs> yeah, you've got to be prepared. To... Yeah, I it's... think he might have been right. <laughs> It's crazy. It's the adrenaline. I remember when I first stepped in, one of the lads that I was friends with there, he said, um, because he gets so involved in it, he said, you don't feel it at the time. He said, I felt the, it. The, the reason you know you've been hit is because of the noise it makes. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, I can I see thought, that. Yeah, I, I never, that. never quite took it that far. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, so really, it, it doesn't matter whether people are in boxing or nutrition um, or music. He, he, what what you're doing is basically promoting people on um, social media and, and the internet in general. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, you, you don't need me to tell you how how far and wide the internet has grown in the last mm. 10, 15, 20 years. The, oh, it's the, way that, it's, the opportunities that now yeah. uh, are available to, to young businesses, or even established businesses, um, it's just it, it's, it's unbelievable, really. Mm. And for what it for what it's worth, in my opinion, it's still growing. I think in twenty years we'll have, I don't know how it looks exactly yet, but I think we'll have another version of this beast that is, that is so huge. Um, so, yeah, in in a sense, the, the fact that you can learn the mechanics of it, and it's it's just like learning a, an, an old school kind of trade, if you like, you know, yeah. the, the aspects of plumbing or, or building work or, or anything else. If you can learn how to optimize your SEO, how to how to put a Facebook campaign together and use use that to propel yourself up google rankings for example a lot of biz, a lot a lot of businesses like to hear that they, they, they're interested in hearing more um so so there's always going to be that market and the pull for it and as as we've just said the industry is growing a 100 miles an hour at least so you have to keep on your toes with it so it's, it's for someone like me who bit of a bit of a workhorse is um it can be a bit of an addiction in itself yeah, oh, I I get so dazzled with it all. I mean, you mentioned bat links before, and you mentioned this and that. And I, I start going all dizzy with it, I, and it, and uh, that that's me that that looks at facts and figures and numbers and tax returns and and all sorts of things all day. And uh, I find yeah. the internet dazzling. I find it, I get so confused with it. So so we we have a bit of a team pushing us forward, forward on that. So so how how long have you been in in this world? How long have you been doing this? So I left university in 2010 um, 
and pretty quickly found myself in the radio world. Ah, um, and what did you do in the radio world? A, a broadcaster, so a host. As, as this is where you interview the the boxers. And, uh... Initially, yeah. Well, it, it started as musicians, but yeah, it quite quickly moved in, into into sport. Um, it wasn't it wasn't exclusively boxers. We have a lot of footballers. I worked as head of social for a while in the journey. Um, at a company that looked after social media for all the, the really big teams. Okay. So I was working with the social team at Real Madrid for a while, Barcelona, um, Bayern Munich and things like that. So it wasn't exclusively boxing. But um, when I was, to, to go back to your question, when, when I started on the radio, Facebook was beginning to kind of find its feet, if you like, in, in the business world. So the, the owners of the station, the, the management the producers, they were all very keen to push, well, you you need to be pushing your shows on Facebook now because this is a, if you take your mindset to where they were, it's a free way of saying, listen to us at seven o'clock or eight o'clock or whatever. We've got, it's, it's an easy way to say we've got, we had ACDC on one week. Well, it's oh, a free wow. way of telling everyone that you have ACDC on. But at the same time, you get labels interested because they've got 10 bands that are unsigned and one of them want to be the next ACDC or the next whatever. So um, it was a really good networking tool. And that was that piqued my interest in it because the, the fear of losing the radio show was something that propelled me to always want to increase my presence in there. You know, I'm I'm a guy that was in a band that didn't do much. If let's well, say if Liam Gallagher wanted to, wanted to come and get a show one day, I'm going to get bumped straight away. So I had to kind of make my value there quite quickly and not just rely on the the witty banter that you <laughs> that you can relay over the airwaves. You know, so. Um, learning learning how to Facebook manage and things like that was a, became a priority quite quickly. So I'd say probably ten years in this game now. Mm, that's it's very interesting that, that the way you evolved. So, so this this radio show is it still you you're still you're broadcasting regularly? We are. Um, COVID has has made us rethink the way we do things. So the right. sport the sports show that I transcended to, which was specific to Manchester, on a station called Imagine FM. Um, has been put on the sidelines for a little while because we can't oh, get to as many. A shame. It is well, we can't get to as many sports shows because right. the, you know we, we have I have access to to certain events, but yeah. um, the major sporting outlets at the moment they're just not letting media into. So right. it's not really the kind of thing you cover from at home. You know, watching the television. It's you, you're, you're any other YouTuber then. You're any other you know, um, blogger or, or, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So um, one thing I've found in this game is it's, it's really important you kind of identify your lane and stay in it. Mm -hmm. So if we start moving into other people's territory, we're instantly competing for an audience that's already committed. Right, um, of And you're not likely to make many friends. Yeah. So, yeah. We, you know, we have we have commitments from the big boys in, in the world of football and boxing that as soon as the doors are back open, and like back you've seen with, with the podcasts, we, we, we keep relevant boxers footballers cricket is yeah. on board anyway so it, it will return just whenever you'll have to send me a link i haven't seen them uh, yeah, I, no I, I didn't realize you ran a radio show so that, that's that's quite interesting and and you do some writing as well i do um yeah the, the, <laughs> no, yeah. jack of all trades master of yeah. none um yeah, yeah ha again i think the, the way the world is the way the world is turning yeah, I think especially when I took the, the decision to go self-employed, uh, you had to you had to add value to yourself. If yeah. I was going to, if I was going to to customers and to companies, um, saying essentially I want your money to to look after your social, you have to generate a certain amount of income to do that. I have to tell you I, if if you if you pay a thousand pound a week for me, I can turn that into three thousand pound. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't realise that that exactly they, they they sort of think well a lot of people overvalue themselves and at the end of the day if a customer doesn't earn more than you cost what what's the point exactly that exactly that so you so i i had to look at every area of my game mm. because i was at the i was at the the point where I, I didn't have a full team i didn't i hadn't hired anybody at that point yes yeah. so if if i was going to and these were not sports people at all these were fireplace sales people these were employment lawyers these were yeah. you know they were they were not um they were not the people that, that i kind of um, usually associated with mm -hmm. so i had the experience from writing when, when we were at the radio station and um, they have uh contacts and, and, and relationships with 
newspapers like the Manchester Evening News. So I would write pieces for them on a regular basis, and it was time to translate that into um, into commercial copy, into into creative copywriting for how do you appeal to your niche? Yeah. And um, yeah, it's again, it's just part of being in the fluid industry that, that yeah. it is. There are lots, lots of good advice to people listening to this because we have a combination. We have varied viewers. We have we have people that are starting out, people that have been in business for a long time. Some of the things you say is second nature to some people and other people. It's it's a, a major revelation sometimes. It's, um, I don't understand what you mean. But just to emphasize what, what you do mean about uh, giving value, I, I, um, I've had several conversations over the year with lots of different people. And I, there was one quite irritating gentleman from a newspaper, and he was trying to sell me some advertising space. And I wasn't overly struck, but you always, you've always got that FOMO, haven't you? You always think, well, am I going to miss out if I don't get involved? And he, he, I think he wanted something like £500 for a half a page in, in, in the newspaper. And, and I said to him, well, I'm not sure, but I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. If, if um, I won't pay for this advert, if you put an advert into me, if it's so good and it brings me one client in, just one, I'll pay you double for the advert and I'll take out a 12-month contract. But somehow he didn't think that was a good deal. <laughs> if you don't have faith in what you're selling, no, find, some, no, find something else to sell. No. Well, we, we sometimes say to people, you know, because when, when people appoint us as accountants um, or, or the thinking of it, I'm not sure what to do, we, we, we'll often say, well, you don't really know who we are, so why don't we prove ourselves? We'll, we'll write up last year's accounts, and if you, you don't like the way we've conducted ourselves, the yours will walk away, and if they do, you know, sign up with us. And, and I, I was, I've always been a big believer in risk reversal. We, we're, we're not, we're not there to stitch people up. We're there for long-term business. Mm -hmm. and this is, this is, this is what you're saying, isn't it? Completely. Um, yeah. you, you've got to know, you've got to know the audience, and you've got to know yeah. who, who you're speaking for. Mm -hmm. Companies all the time fall into speaking how they think they want to be heard. Yeah. And you've got to remember that you're not speaking to yourself. You're no. speaking to different yeah. people. And we're listening, aren't we? We're, we're, we're listening to, to what they're really saying. I, mean, I get people saying, I've just had this big this, this big fat bill, £5,000, and I don't know what it's for. And, and I say, but you're not registered for VAT. You're sure it's for VAT. So it's a matter of, of uh, understanding what people mean. Yeah, completely. Well, and I think, I th I think the, whole, the whole corona situation has forced people to, to maybe listen to others more. Yeah. Um, you know, the fact that it started to impact everybody and, you know, the government would come out with these guidelines, you know, um, please don't go to, to bars and restaurants or please don't go to grandparents or whatever. And all of a sudden, what sounds like a pretty simple generic rule to follow, you would have all these different people popping up saying, well, my circumstance is this and therefore I need to go and do that. And it's the same in business. It's exactly the same. You know, um, people have different needs and you've yeah. got to, like you say, you've got to listen to them and speak and answer the questions that they're asking, not just kind of drill forward with yeah. whatever it is that you're pushing. Well, I'm going to ask you a question now. Just going to throw it in there. Go on. You deal with a lot of interesting people. You're dealing verbally and on, over the internet, and, and you're interviewing people. What's the most embarrassing situation you've ever been in when you're talking to someone? Um, the, there's a few to pick from. <laughs> um, there was one time um, I was working a very big boxing show and um, our battery ran out on the camera while oh. we were interviewing a, a, a world champion boxer, oh. which, was quite, which was quite annoying and quite frustrating. Yeah. Um, and it showed lack of preparation on our side, which is possibly the biggest no-no in my whole playbook. But so, nothing, um, nothing that someone said. That's the, they've said something that's been a bit. Oh, I've had I've had a very very high profile footballer lately. Yeah, that, um, I, I simply just cannot say the name of because okay. it, of potential implications. But um, I was asking him about work. He, he was a footballer that had retired and moved into management. Okay, and I was speaking to him about what it's like working with chairman, and um, he he went down the route of one chairman in particular who he'd had a bad experience with. And um, it started off him saying how he didn't like the way he spoke to people. He didn't like his tone, didn't like um, that he had no respect for him, even though he, he, he played for England and he, he played in the Premier League and he didn't seem to value his football opinion. 
But he then started saying he would deliberately cut off conversations halfway through to 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 um to talk about ordering glass for his yacht and things like this yeah. while the conversation was going on. And then that was a bit like mm, this guy, this chairman that he was talking about is known for picking up the phone and, you know, he's not scared to say, I'm going to put you in a bit of trouble for this. And the conversation quickly moved into how we, um, how we tried to break the law to, to end his contract early and things like this. Um, and I'm sitting there thinking from a broadcast perspective, uh, broadcaster's perspective this is going to do amazing numbers because this is you are absolutely digging somebody out but on the other side a we've not he doesn't have a right of response here yeah um and and secondly um i don't want to get sued no. <laughs> so, so you don't want so. to be that guy do you but you know something chris it's been an absolutely wonderful listening to you and talking to you and um i hope we see you again and i want to thank uh, everybody for joining us today and i want to thank chris again for coming on the show it must be a bit of a come down to his usual shows and uh, um, <laughs> I, I think has it been a come again. down for you having children as guest I, I, do, do <laughs> I, I i i've always said that god hates me and he gave me three daughters to prove it <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know thank you again and um we'll, we'll speak to you very soon take, 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 take care Bye, everybody. Bye.